Yo, what it do? SRT Game. Get your boy with the fat swaggy reacts, and we are back with another reaction video, man. And shout out to Mr. Nightmare. Now, I know we late as hell on this video, man, but it's better late than never. Today, we're going to be checking out three true disturbing police horror stories. Now, we know what's been going on with the whole police like brutality thing going on for the last couple mad years right now man but we're gonna go ahead and get like get into see some horror stories man shout us out again to uh like mr nightmare for giving us this content man like salute to the officers that put their like lives on the line damn near every single day out there man so it's kind of like we can definitely check in and see what type of horror stories that they go through man so without further ado man like let's go ahead and check this thing out Again, man, shout out again to Mr. Nightmare, man. So, I mean, let's get this video to 200 likes. Let's get to it. Oh, yeah, like, I asked you guys see, I mean, there's no green screen tonight. I just ain't feel like doing one today, man. So, sorry about that. I work nights for the Sheriff's Department in Bergen County. I've been on the force for two years. I haven't seen too much craziness, aside from late night drug arrests, a few robbery calls, and a few assault calls. Mm -hmm. Northeastern Bergen County is pretty low crime after all, so those are usually the worst calls I deal with. There was this one night that I received a disturbance call to investigate a scream that came from a house nearby. Usually a call like this would mean a domestic dispute, or even just something as harmless as people drinking and being too loud. I arrived to the house though. And I had to confirm twice that it was the correct house, because none of the lights were on. There was a car in the driveway though, a blue Toyota Sienna minivan. Someone was home. I went over to knock on the door a few times. The neighbor must have seen my car, because he came out and walked over, reporting that he was the one to call the police. He told me he heard a blood-curdling scream from the house, and that the woman who lives there lives alone but occasionally had her boyfriend over, making it slightly more concerning. Whoa. I tried the doorknob now which was locked. I then made my way around the house, trying all the windows, which were all locked. All but one, one of the backyard windows. It was already slid completely up, enough for someone to climb through. This was a red flag, considering every other window was closed. I requested backup to the scene, and once I got confirmation, I climbed into the house through the window. I started to flick every light on that I could find in the house, starting in the kitchen and working my way to the living room. And yes, it's advisable for police to turn on the lights when investigating buildings. What you see in TV shows and movies where they leave the lights off is only done for suspense. Right. I called out for the woman, trying to assure her it's okay, police were here. Though at that time, I still didn't know what exactly the situation was, other than she was reported screaming. There was no response no matter how loud I yelled. The first floor was clear, so there was only the upstairs left to check. I wanted to wait for backup to arrive, because I was nervous what I'd find up there. But I'd also not forgive myself if I waited and wasted precious time that I could have used to save this woman from a possible medical emergency. Right. Before going up the stairs, I unlocked the front door for when backup would arrive. I then walked up the carpeted stairs quietly, and as I got halfway up the stairs, I peered over the ledge onto the second floor. There were four doors up there. I flicked on the light switch in the hallway, and called out one more time. I heard a creak type sound come from behind one of the doors, so she had to be in there. I opened the door, and it was a bedroom. The light was off, but the light from the hall was plenty to see a woman laying in bed under the covers. I saw the back of her head. I walked over to her to make sure she was okay, but as I was close, I noticed dark stains that soaked the other side of the covers. The side of her I couldn't see from the door. I yanked the covers off the woman and realized it was blood and she'd been stabbed multiple times, oh. but she was still breathing. I grabbed my walkie and reported a stabbing, requesting immediate backup and an ambulance. The creak I heard moments before suddenly made no sense if this woman was in bed like this. Could the guy still Given in she there? was unconscious, someone placed her in the bed most likely. I did a 360 in place, looking around the room. There was a closet. It was instinctively the first place I'd think to look. I had my gun drawn and had my hand on the doorknob for five seconds gathering the courage to yank the door open. When I finally did, there was no one inside. I turned around again to look at the bed, at the bleeding woman. Then I thought, the bed. I got on my knees to be level with the bottom of the bed, 
I yanked the bed wrap covering the bottom of the bed up, and I was then eye to eye with a man wearing a face mask covering the lower half of his face. I shrieked and yelled, show me your hands. He slowly raised his hands above his head as much as he could. I got up and told him to get out from under the bed slowly and made sure he wasn't holding the knife. I had him stand in the corner with his hands up until my backup came. I wasn't about to try and handcuff him in there alone. Uh, no. He could have any weapon on his hell person. No. Hell no. I told backup to meet me upstairs, and when they entered the house, I called up to them. Only then did I place the man under arrest. An ambulance arrived not too long after, and the woman was rushed to the hospital, and she managed to survive being stabbed six times. Mm. The man who did it... Damn, six times! ...hospital, and she managed to survive being stabbed six times. The man who did it was in fact her boyfriend, which I didn't find too surprising, honestly. Wow. The man had found out that she cheated on him with his friend, and when he called her about it, Whoa. she broke up with him over the phone. And this must have caused the man to snap. She out here smashing the homies? That's tough. About it. She broke up with him over the phone. Oh, smashing the this homies? This must have caused the man to snap. I'm just very thankful the woman survived. Mm, but definitely, yeah. Like, I mean, I definitely, I mean, I'm happy that Booking.com that, man, because again, like, 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 like you helps you find and book just what you want. That's tough, man. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah. better be loyal you The story here. was told to me by my best friend's uncle, who works the night shift as a police officer in our city. A year or so ago, Mike, my best friend's uncle, was out on his nightly patrol with his partner, Steve. They've been working together for years, and they're both army veterans, so they're very level-headed and calm people, perfect for being police officers. Mm -hmm. When they got a call from a landlord at an apartment complex complaining about one of his tenants, they didn't really expect anything bad. They get calls like that all the time, so they headed over to see what was going on. When they arrived, the landlord greeted them outside. It was probably one or two in the morning, and everyone from the complex was standing out in the grass, which was odd. Damn. The landlord approached Mike and Steve, and started to rant about one of their neighbors being crazy and turning all the water on in his apartment. Apparently he was some guy in his 30s, and he'd been acting weird lately. Mike could see that there was water seeping out from the front door to the place, and decided they had to go in and do a welfare check on the guy. When they walked in, water was pouring down the stairs and clearly flooding the building, which meant that this water had to have been turned on for hours to cause this kind of damage. They climbed to the second story, and knocked on the door where the water was gushing out from. The landlord told them that the tenant's name was Adam, and so they pounded on the door calling his name. No one answered for a couple minutes, and so they decided to break the door down. When they did, they spotted Adam standing in his kitchen. All of the sinks, the shower, and the toilet from the bathroom, and a hose from outside were gushing water everywhere. Adam was standing there, shaking. His eyes were wide, like he was terrified to move. Adam, what's going on? Are you alright? Mike asked while his partner Steve walked further inside to check everything out. Steve walked into the bathroom to turn off the water and to make sure no one else was in the apartment. Mike slowly approached Adam, who seemed terrified because he was shaking so much. He didn't even look at Mike as he approached. Again, he was asked what was wrong, and he finally stuttered out that there are people in the walls. Mike didn't hear what he was saying at first, what? but as he got closer, Adam started to hear it over and over, louder and louder. There are people in the walls, until he was almost screaming it, getting himself worked up. Steve walked into the bedroom next and was clearing the room when he checked the closet and noticed something as he turned on the light. There was a very faint line that ran across the wall. At first he didn't think anything of it, but then he heard what Adam was screaming and a sinking feeling hit his gut. The more he stared at it, the more he realized that the line was in the shape of a door cut out of the wall. It clearly wasn't meant to be there. Mike was about to lead Adam out of the apartment when Steve suddenly called to him, you better take a look at this. Mike went into the other room to see Steve pointing his gun at the wall in the bedroom, clearly freaked out. They both approached the door, guns raised while Adam started to cry in the back room. Steve quickly pulled a piece of wall back, and they both froze, when three sets of eyes stared back at them. Whoa! Three people were pressed together three in this tiny space eyes? in the wall. Their whoa, 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 three sets of eyes. There was three dudes back there, like, looking, what? Three sets of eyes stared back at them. Three people were pressed together in this tiny space in the wall their faces painted in weird patterns. Both Steve and Mike ordered them out and handcuffed each one. By that time, backup had arrived and some other police officers got Adam out of there. 
They led the three downstairs and sent them off to jail. Mike and Steve were deeply disturbed by the whole exchange. It was only made worse when a couple months later, they found out that the three people on the wall were from some crazy cult out in the woods. They were trying to get Adam to join them. Bro, wait, so y'all over here hiding people walls like just for y'all to try to get them to join y'all cult? Like what? Yo, people are crazy, people bro. People on the wall were from some crazy cult out in the woods. They were trying to get Adam to join them. They preyed on him because they knew he had a past history of being mentally unstable. They were trying to scare him. He turned on all the water in an attempt to flush them out of his own home. To this day, Mike and Steve say that this was the most disturbing call they've ever been on. That's crazy, bro. Like, that's, that's wild. Hiding the people walls just for y'all to get them to join your cult? I ain't never heard no shit like that. This that's one crazy. time when I was working a 12-hour overnight shift... I went out on a call for a suspicious person walking house to house, knocking on doors, and saying things to people through their doors or to their doorbell cameras. I arrived to the man's house who called it in, and he explained better in person that it was a middle-aged woman with long, wiry hair holding something behind her back, going door to door yelling at people to open up and mumbling to herself. The man who called the police had a ring doorbell camera, and so he showed me the footage that it caught. The woman came up to the door, looked at the camera for a few minutes, literally, then pressed the button. She started speaking into the mic of the doorbell, and the homeowner started talking back through his phone, starting by asking who she is and what she wants. She kept saying, open the door, she needs blood, and would smile and cackle right? each time. Yo, hello, yo, first off, come to this house. Come to this house right here and say some shit like that. <laughs> you gonna get all the blood that you need, like, coming out yourself. You feel me? I'm gonna, listen. Ha, <laughs> ha. Yeah, 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 come play with me over here, like, play with your mama, don't play with me. She kept saying, open the door, she no needs way. blood, and would smile and cackle each you time she said blood, it. I... When he threatened to call the police, she laughed and started basically punching the door and trying to remove the ring doorbell camera from the wall. It wasn't possible to tell if the threat of calling the police is what eventually got her to leave, but when she did, the man saw that she went to the house next door. This was when he actually called 911. The footage was absolutely bone chilling. It was like a scene from a scary movie, and it wasn't possible to tell what she was holding behind her back because of the creepy way she backed away from the door to the sidewalk, still facing the doorbell camera the entire time. There were two or three other units on this now, driving around the area trying to find the woman. It was basically a mini manhunt now, and the description being used was possibly armed and dangerous woman. I checked the nearby houses on foot really quickly, then got back in my car and started patrolling the area as well. None of us could find the woman, and then we got a report of a breaking and entering nearby. Someone had called 911 to report that someone had entered their house with a weapon, and the caller was hiding in their bedroom upstairs. The call okay, so somebody actually opened the door? Like, what? The caller also had a doorbell camera and was able to see the woman entering the house through the front door, but not before looking into the camera for a few moments again. I arrived to the house just about the same time as another unit. Entering the house was easy as the front door was left unlocked, of course. We had to enter with caution, though, with guns drawn, because we didn't know how dangerous this woman was right. or what she could be armed with. Right. As we entered and the foyer was clear, another officer and I shouted that the police were here, and we ordered the intruder to come out with her hands up. Then there was a scream for help from upstairs. Oh my, God. my adrenaline oh. was rushing, as it does in any situation like this involving armed suspects. We ran up the stairs and followed the screams for help. They led us to the master bedroom. The husband unlocked and opened the bedroom door as we got upstairs, the husband of the couple sitting and hiding in there. They hadn't left the bedroom since the woman had entered the house, and they said she had been clawing and banging at the door only a few minutes ago, and that they didn't hear her leave, oh, let alone man. even go down the stairs. So she's still in the we house. had to check every other room in the upstairs for her, and in one of the corner bedrooms, in the pitch blackness, we heard a cackling sound. Not being cackling. able to see her, but to hear her was downright bitch. spine chilling. Bro, this bitch crazy. <laughs> this bitch is crazy sitting in the corner laughing. Like, this bitch is crazy. Cackling <laughs> sound. Yo, Not she being is able crazy. To see her, but to hear her was downright spine chilling. Mentally unstable. I flicked on the light to the bedroom. And she was there sitting on the bed, already looking at me and smiling. She had a huge knife in her hand and there was blood soaking the bed sheets that she was sitting on. It was her blood. She had just cut one of her wrists. What? She started saying exactly what she was saying on the first guy's doorbell camera, that she needs blood. 
We didn't know who she meant until noticing the little doll sitting between her legs. It was a little girl's doll, covered in the woman's blood. We yelled at her to drop the knife with our guns drawn on her. What? She just laughed and kept saying what she was saying. There was clearly something very wrong yeah, with her. Something about reasoning she, with yeah. her didn't seem like it. Yeah, something's wrong with her. She's mentally unstable right now, bro. It would be possible, but we tried anyway. I asked her who is this she she keeps referencing and tried to talk nice to her, saying she doesn't have to hurt herself or anybody else and that we're there to help her. But as she continued to stare at us, mainly at me, and laugh and keep muttering barely understandable sentences, I got increasingly nervous. I had my gun aimed at the giant knife in her hand, contemplating shooting it out of her hand, considering if that was a viable, safe option. No, no, but neither okay. of us were expecting what happened next. The crazed woman sprang off the bed and made this growling sound as she was about to lunge at me and presumably attack me as her knife was raised in the air. I reacted the only way right. I could in the moment, and I shot at her twice, exactly. both yeah. times hitting her in the arm. As even though I was still trying to have my sight aimed on the knife, I wasn't expecting her to just jump up suddenly. Right, gotta she dropped the knife do. and started to scream. Like in that point, like in that point in time, bro. As an officer, you gotta do what you gotta do, bro. Like she's she's aggressively attacking you with a weapon, a deadly weapon at that. Know what I'm saying? So you gotta do what you gotta do to just, like, like. You know, like save yourself and the family, you know what I'm saying? On the knife, I wasn't expecting her to just jump up suddenly. She dropped the knife and started to scream and cry as she grabbed her arm. We took this moment to subdue her and place her in cuffs. We had to get her an ambulance immediately before she'd bleed out. From the hospital, she'd later be transported to a local jail. And she was later found not guilty on all charges by reason of insanity. No, She's currently man. a patient at a mental asylum in my city. Oh, man, the horror bro. that every party involved in this incident had to go through was unimaginable. Wow, From all bro. the people who were scared to open their doors to a crazed woman welding something unknown behind her back, to the couple that actually almost fell victim to her in their own house, to myself and the other officer that were on the scene before she was in custody, it was the scariest experience of my 10 years being a police officer. And that's exactly why I be trying to tell you guys on some of these videos, man. Like, make sure that everything in the house is locked up, man, for this particular reason right here. So anyone can just walk into your house and just do God knows anything to y'all. You know what I'm saying? Thank God that the family that she, I mean, how she got into wasn't harmed. You know what I'm saying? And, like, she, like, you know, like, unfortunately ended up getting shot. You know what I'm saying? And she is now in a mental hospital now so i hope she get all the treatment that she need and go to rehab and do whatever you gotta do to, to don't do nothing crazy like this man like no more like people are just crazy out here man but tell me how you guys feel about this video man by liking disliking the video and like and also just making sure you guys are tuning in tomorrow when i drop another one for you guys man y'all already know what time it is man srt game i am out this thing man